Today the gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 4 verses 26 through 34. He also said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with that we can compare the kingdom of God. Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme today, planting seeds, planting seeds. As I mentioned earlier, the city is opening up. People are not gonna sit in this summer. Things are kind of happening. And for the first time in over a year, I got to go to the movies to see In the Heights. I had seen the previews and I thought, well, if I'm going to eventually go to the movies, this would be the movie to see. This is to me a Latino pride movie about everyday folks in a gentrifying Washington Heights, New York, wanting better for themselves. One of their own, Nina Rosario, is so bright, she gets accepted to Stanford University, which if you know your geography and you know where New York is and you know where Stanford is, it's like on the other side of the map. Her dad sells part of his business so that he can pay for her tuition freshman year. While they're in college, her roommate comes up with a missing item in her room. Nina becomes the primary suspect. They search her stuff. They find the item all right, but they find it on the person who reported it stolen. Rosario comes home depleted. She does not want to go back. It is summertime, summertime. She is a seed that has no purpose at Stanford, feeling invisible by day. She is not seen as the bright, intelligent girl that her community has taught her that she is. But instead, there at Stanford, she feels invisible. And so when she comes back home, she announces to her family and her community, she's not going back. In the biblical text today, and actually the whole chapter, there is much talk about seeds. Seeds that grow and seeds that do not grow seeds that are planted and seeds rejected by the earth, seeds that get a good start and seeds that never ever had a chance, seeds that fell on good soil and seeds that fell on rocky paths, seeds that are preyed on and over and seeds that wither under an oppressive sun, seeds that spring forth and seeds whose potential die before ever really having a chance. There are all sorts of things that can happen to a seed So, A seed is vulnerable, but seeds have great potential. It can falter, but today the text tells us that the seed grew and grew and grew and grew. Recently, I was at a conference for pastors and there were all kinds of metaphors because we were meeting on a campsite. So there were all these metaphors about nature. And doing the conference in our own individual packets, all of us were given packages of seeds. And the seeds were all different. We had different kinds of seeds, but the same instruction, plant the seeds. It's a very significant part of our Christian call to plant seeds. 
Jesus' last words to the disciples were, go out into the world and plant seeds. Each Sunday at the benediction, we send you into the world to do what? To plant seeds. It is the calling of every follower of Christ to plant seeds. And we do not know what will happen to these seeds, but it's important that in faith we plant seeds. It is important for us to share the good news with others. And each of us might be planting a different seed, but we need to plant seeds. Go and plant seeds, says Jesus. In the text today, the seed was the word of God. It is important for us to break open the Bible and how complicated it is to extrapolate what its exact meaning, if there's an exact meaning at all. There are years and years between the text and our lived experience today. The context in which the Bible was written and the context for our lives has really greatly shifted. It is important to understand who each book was written for and who was doing the writing and the time and the situation in which they were addressing. None of the writers were writing to an overpopulated world. They were not writing to us in 2021. They were not writing to a literate world. They were not writing to our time period. And when they wrote, they had no idea that their written word would be preserved, all written and used for years and years to come. We have to dive into what we do know as we read and understand this book. Many have used the Bible to kill seeds. Many have used the Bible to limit seeds. Many have used the Bible to harm seeds out of ignorance. Seeds need a chance and seeds need to know how much they love and seeds need to understand the grace of God that's available to them. The church has used this text to make some people feel so unworthy and unloved and judged. One of the things as I sit back and look at my own coming of age, my own growth, that I regret about my religious upbringing is how much we taught people to judge others. I remember in my own church when I was a child that unwed mothers had to come before the church and apologize to the whole church. That's what we did in the Baptist denomination. We judge people for how they look and for their choices. It is a seed passed down from our ancestors that Jesus saw even in the religious leaders of this time where one sits and looks down on another and it was a real trigger for Jesus Christ. He who is without sin, hey, go, throw a stone, and nobody does. In other words, Jesus is saying, shut up. And still today, the church has got it bad. We're so quick to judge others who instead need our loves and our prayers more than our criticism. This critical spirit of judgment is like a weed in our church, causing us to look at the external with little interest in what is really going on with people. But seeds do not grow in judgment. There are certain settings where seeds thrive, but they do not thrive in judgment. For a seed to have a chance, a seed needs time. It needs love. It needs purpose. In the text today, the planter did not have a lot of expectations for the seed. There was no eight-step plan. He was aware of the seed, but he was working a full-time job and did not have time to sit and watch the seed meticulously. But in his almost nonchalant disposition and over time, the plant grows and it grows and it grows until it has the attention of the one who planted it in the first place. This text sort of balances out our desire to control everything with we are not really in control at all. If we plant the seed and we give the seed time and space, the seed might surprise us. The person in the text is surprised when the seed grows and grows and grows and grows. And all he did was planted the seed. In this movie, In the Heights, Nina back home, she drinks in like a cold cup of water on a hundred degree day. She drinks in her community. She drinks in the sounds of the community, the birds. She drinks in the laughter. She drinks in watching her people. This is home for her. 
And after a year of being planted at Stanford, she wants none of that other world. The people around her judge her at first. Could she be pregnant? Did she fail out? And on and on the gossip goes. Her dad, who never finished college, only wants for her better than he had for himself. And it is in this time and with the love of her community that she is able to see for herself that she is a seed that is planted. She's not just planted in a hostile community. She's not just over there at Stanford for any reason at all, but that she is an extension of her community to serve as a bridge. With time, she is able to realize her purpose and to understand Stanford not as a home, but as a means to an end. She returns to Stanford basking in the love and the stability of her community as her nourishment, and now she has purpose. We suspect that with this newfound understanding, the seed grows. Seeds need time, seeds need love, and seeds need purpose. We need to plant seed even when we can't see the growth, or we think that it doesn't matter, just keep on planting. Have you ever planted a seed and wondered what happened to it? Sometimes we can grow discouraged, feeling like the seed ain't doing anything, but just keep planting. Even when Nina has given up, her dad just keeps on planting. He keeps on loving. He keeps on doing what he knows to do. He sells the rest of the business. She gets mad at him, but he just keeps on planting seed. Many of you know I'm not a dog person, but a year ago, a dog came to our home. I'm not a dog person. I never really have been. It's not a big ambition of mine to be a dog person. But a year ago, we welcomed a puppy into our home, and that puppy made me more sensitive. I'm probably not gonna be a dog advocate, but my heart is a lot more sensitive toward the canine purpose. And so I notice the commercials, and I notice when I hear about rescue dogs, and when I hear about certain situations that dogs have been exposed to, it touches me a little bit more deeply. I know there are people who have rescued dogs, and I wanted to tell you this story this morning about a wonderful family that took in abused dog and gave the dog a different home and planted a different seed and how the dog went from being hostile to being friendly, to being kid friendly. And that a couple months later, people couldn't recognize this dog because of the seed and the change and the things that happened to this dog. But then I learned that sometimes when we plant seeds, it's not from A to Z. Maybe it's just from A to D. Sometimes when we plant seeds, it's not all that. And I was reminded on this week that we have a dog rescuer in our own church. She's probably gonna kill me. But Deb Major, our chair, rescued a dog. A few years back, she saw a dog that was harmed, that was injured, that was gonna die in the middle of the winter. And she rescued it to pass it on, but the dog ended up staying at her house and she gave it care. And the dog today, well, she says he can't be around a whole lot of people. But when that dog is situated and he's in his context and she's loving up on him and things are okay around him, he's better than what he was. He may not get to D, I mean, he may not get to Z. You see, it's one thing to get a puppy and nurture him, but it's another to see an injured dog in the middle of winter and respond and take that dog in. You see, Deb planted seeds. She saw an injured dog and she took the dog in. And maybe he's not gonna ever be kid friendly, but in the right context, he's gonna be okay. He gets to live and that's growth too. And some days he has good days. She continues to provide for this dog with a loving, caring home reminding us that seeds can't counter all the damage done in our world, but reminding us that it is our job to plant seeds. It's not our job to worry about the outcome. It's just our job to get out of our head and plant seeds when we can. We can't worry about what will happen or if something will survive. It is just our job to plant as many seeds as possible with purpose. As I was walking to the theater, it had been raining yesterday, 
and it had stopped raining. So I was walking. I was getting in my Fitbit points that day. I mean, I was racking them up. Walking to the theater, I saw a lady who looked familiar. Now, y'all, the movie started at 340. I was about five minutes away, and it was 343 right now. So when I saw someone I knew, I, believe me when I say I was not interested in having any kind of conversation. I didn't want to be rude. The lady opened her mouth and said, don't I know you? I try to be nice, but when it comes to time and being on time, I have a problem, and my behavior is not all that good. I was trying to be nice to the lady and move it on, but she was trying to have a conversation. And so she started talking about being parents. And I was like, oh yeah, our kids. Like, what school? And so she named a school. And I was like, no, my son's never been to that school. And then she said, are you a therapist? And I was like, ding, 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 got it. And then in that moment, she says, I just want to thank you for what you did to my family. And in that quick moment, I realized, even though I was trying to rush to get to somewhere else, that a sea planet had lived. What we do, what we say, how we shine the light of Christ in our daily activity might not get noticed by a whole lot of people, but every now and then God shows us that a seed got planted, that a seed lived, that a seed grew, that a seed survived, and we can be surprised. The literal translation in the text is that the seed was thrown to the ground. The seed was thrown to the earth by the planter. The seed grows without the man's awareness. The man keeps checking, but he leaves the seed alone. The man gives the seed room and time. The seed grows. The man is surprised by the growth. The man goes away and leaves the seed with its own purpose. The seed keeps growing. And all of this happened because a seed was planted. The man is tickled by the seed's growth. Nina's dad notices the seed in his daughter. He notices the seed is growing when she says, I don't know, daughter, what you just said now, but I know the seed is growing and I know you're going to be a success because finally you see further than I do. Nina is going to bloom where she's planted because she is nourished in the community and she now has a purpose. We can't give up on our seeds, keep planting, just keep throwing seeds down, just black seeds because God gives the increase. Just keep planting seeds, see what God can do. Just keep planting seeds and wait for the increase. Just plant seeds and have a little faith. Just plant seed because some seeds, they will live and they will surprise you. Just plant because we've been sent by God. Just plant seeds because the earth is in need of seed. Just plant because this is the season in which we should be planting. Just keep planting, giving them time and giving them love and letting the seed discover its own purpose. Get out there. I know that you've been planting seeds, but get out there and plant some seeds. Y'all done did social distancing. Y'all done been safe. You done got vaccinated. Let's get out there and plant, plant seeds. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, it does seem a part of our legacy in our church where we've often judged people, we've often condemned people. It's just the truth. But we have a part in tomorrow. And so help us, Lord, to be gracious. Help us to be less judgmental. Help us to plant seeds of love and grace. Help us to plant seeds of kindness and hope. Help us, Lord, because we've been over a journey to plant seeds in the younger generation by listening and encouraging, planting seeds of hope in our world because we know what you can do, Lord. Help us, Lord, that when you send us forth today, we don't just wait for next Sunday, but we find a way with our little bit of seeds to plant them, to throw them to the earth. In Jesus' name, amen.